Part 1. You are going to hear a conversation between Don and a rental agent. He hopes that his apartment problems can be solved. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. We shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good morning. I am a rental agency. How can I help? Oh, hello. I'm ringing about some problems I'm having with my apartment. Yes, of course. If I can just get a few details first. What's your name? Don Chester. How do you spell that? C-H-E-S-T-E-R OK. And the address? Apartment 4, 18 Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane. And that's in? In Newbridge. Oh, yes. I know the one. Could I ask how long is the lease? It's for a year. And you moved in on? Last week. On 24th May. Good. Thanks. Now, what are the problems you found? Well, nothing too serious, you know, but a few things that have been building up over a few days. Yes, of course. Well, the first thing is the fridge. The seal on the door is decayed, and we have a small child and need to keep milk cool, so we need to get that done straight away. OK, that's the fridge for immediate repair. And then there's a little problem with the gas water heater. Uh-huh. The switch is broken. Right. It's not serious, and we can still use it. But if you can send somebody over in the next couple of weeks or so, that'd be great. OK, I've got that. Then we're worried about the front windows. Are they broken? No, but there are no blinds on them. And, you know, with privacy these days. And when would you like those done? Oh, it's not really urgent. But there are only thin curtains on the windows and people are walking past. Yes, we'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. There are only thin curtains on the windows, and people are walking past. Yes. We'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. And then there's the front door lock. It's getting quite annoying. It often jams, and we sometimes have to fiddle with it for minutes before we can get in the apartment. I'd really like to get that fixed up right away. That's no problem. And then the last thing is the shower curtain. It's torn. Oh, right. We can get a new one and have it to you in the next week, if that's all right with you. Yes, that's OK. Anything else? No, that's all. OK, fine. What we'll do now is get someone over to you this afternoon if you're home. Well, I'll be out for a short while. OK. Tell us your preferred times. Well, the best time is about two o'clock. I'd have to check that with him. And if he can't get there then, what would be your second preference? Oh, any time up to 6pm would be fine. OK, I've got that. Great. Thanks very much. That's fine. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. 
You will hear a speech given by the head of a company to some new employees. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 11 to 16. First of all, a warm welcome to Barker's Country Safaris. We're delighted to have you all on board for this season. I know you've all been told a bit about the company when you had your job interview, but I thought it would be worth telling you a bit more about ourselves. Barker's was set up 10 years ago by myself, John, and my then girlfriend and now wife, Nancy. We started it initially just as a hobby, we felt that there was a good opportunity to share our love of the countryside in this part of the world with the many visitors who come here. As you know, most people come for the beaches in the summer, but there is so much more to the region, and this is what we wanted to exploit. Nancy and I were born near here, and as teenagers we went climbing, kayaking, white water rafting, potholing, and just straightforward walking. This district is in our blood and we love it. <laughs> While we were still at university, we started taking small groups of visitors out into the National Park in Nancy's brother's old Land Rover. We'd drive them around the back lanes and into the forest. We'd also organise rock climbing tours for friends of friends. Then, each year, without us having to advertise, people came back to us to ask for more excursions and trips. So, five years ago, we gave up our other jobs to focus full-time on Barker's Country Safaris. Now, two years after that, we set up the activity tour part of the business, and one year ago, we expanded into organising activities for school groups during term time. Obviously, this was a massive challenge with all the health and safety requirements, but it's proving a great success. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 17 to 20. Anyway, we'll certainly not be dealing with school parties during the summer holidays. Our clients for the next three months are mostly family parties or groups of friends, and I'd like to talk a bit now about the tours we offer and what your responsibilities will be. Our most popular excursion is the Woodland Tour and Trail. Now, often this is sold out and we have all of our 10 Jeeps in convoy with eight people in each Jeep. It's a lot of fun. These tours really offer a taster of what we can provide. So as both driver and guide, it is important that you do a good job here so they come back for the bigger tours. Uh, I will talk about the commission package later. As the summer days are so long, we have three tours each day, but you will not be expected to work on more than two of them. Morning tours start at 8am and go to midday. Afternoon tours are from 2pm to 6pm, and then evening ones, 7pm to 11pm. All the tours follow the same route, and you should have made yourselves familiar with all the key information. This was provided to you in the information pack you were sent when you accepted the job offer. This is important, so if you haven't had time yet, please do so now. Our second most popular tour is the Family Exclusive. Now, this tour is for the whole day and for only one group. Usually it is just one Jeep, but sometimes there are two if the party is large. 
These tours go from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. and include lunch at the Brown Bear in Lower Middleton. We have a number of different routes for these tours as we don't want our premium clients being made to feel that they are part of a large package deal. Uh, you will be told which route to take with your weekly schedule. Now, I'd like to move on to these specialty tour packages. These are the ones that we are keen to book people on once they've done the woodland tour and trail trip. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a phone conversation giving information about a health and fitness centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hello. Hello. Is that Ms Heidi Jones? Yes. Good morning, Ms Jones. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to tell you about the Seven Oaks Health and Fitness Centre which is in your suburb. Would that be convenient? OK. Well, the centre's not far from you. It's on the corner of Marion Street and Giles Street and has a large car park. It's open every day of the week, opening on weekdays at 6am and at 9am at the weekend. It closes at 9.30pm Monday to Friday and on Saturday at 4pm and Sunday at 2pm. We also have childcare Monday to Saturday from 9 in the morning until midday for a small extra charge. So you can leave your children in safe hands while you attend one of our classes. Or perhaps have a swim, or if you just want to relax in the spa and sauna or steam room. Talking of classes, we have a very wide range which are designed to suit all different levels of fitness and individual needs. I mentioned the pool just now. Well, in addition to swimming laps or just relaxing, we also offer aqua aerobic classes, which are 45 minute classes that use the therapeutic effects of water. This provides a very safe and effective exercise and is suitable for all fitness levels, as well as being a lot of fun. Many people who haven't been exercising for a while start in the aqua classes, as do people who need to take care after hospital surgery, for example. These classes are very popular and are scheduled every weekday, Monday to Friday, and on Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning. Another very popular activity in the pool area is learning to swim and these swimming classes are held at 4pm every weekday and in the mornings at the weekend. By the way, they're open to both adults and children of any age. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, it would take too much of your time to tell you in detail about all our programs, as we have a very wide range of activities at different times. However, I'll just outline some of them. Our super circuit classes are extremely popular and you get a good aerobic workout while toning your muscles. They're easy to learn as you combine using hydraulic equipment with exercises guaranteed to give you a good cardio workout. The teachers are very good and there's a fun atmosphere. And the classes are very effective in assisting weight loss, relieving stress, lowering blood pressure and generally increasing fitness. Oh, and I haven't mentioned our range of aerobic and step classes of different types which suit all levels. Our specially designed aerobics room holds over 55 people and our highly qualified and trained staff can advise you as to which class might suit you. We are inviting you to a free one week trial period when you can come and try any of the classes or activities before you make the decision to join. By the way, there is also a large and very well equipped gym where we offer free fitness assessments and you can have an individual program designed just for you. Also, the cardiovascular room has the latest range of machines which help you burn fat, increase your fitness or just warm up. They are very popular as you can forget all about the calorie burning by watching your favourite music videos on TV while you exercise. Right now we have a very special new member joining fee offer which allows two memberships for the price of one, a real bargain. So if you can, bring along a friend who'd like to get fit as well in time for summer. Come along and try us out. You can meet the staff. Try out some of the classes for a week, absolutely free. And then, if you like us, Sign up for only $110 each for six months. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the centre and I hope we'll see you there soon, Heidi. I'll put one of our brochures in the mail for you right now. Bye for now. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a biology lecture about tubularia. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hello, everyone. I'm glad so many people have shown up here today to hear about these fascinating little creatures called the turbularia. My name is Dr. Baker, and I've spent 20 years researching thousands of different species of platyhelminths, what are commonly known as flatworms, both free-living and parasitic. So there are a lot of things I could tell you about these extremely interesting invertebrate, but I will try to keep it short. Turbularia are unique amongst flatworms in three ways. The first one is that unlike 80% of all platyhelminths, 
Turbillaria do not need to secure nourishment from a living source. This means that they do not generally parasitize a host, but are instead found living freely in the environment. So, no need to worry about any of these little samples I've got here escaping and causing havoc. The second way in which they're different is that they are, well, they're incredibly simple. And by simple, I don't mean in terms of structure, as their structure is indeed quite complex, and I'll get to that later. By simple, I mean that they're not the brightest bulbs in the box. Flatworms in general are not known for their cognitive abilities, especially when compared with other invertebrates such as cuttlefish or octopuses or even insects. But amongst flatworms, turbillaria are by far the most primitive of the bunch. Finally, and this is a direct result of the first thing I mentioned, turbillaria tend to have a much more complicated sensory system in their head region. This includes a set of eyes with receptors that can detect light, as well as chemical sensory organs that assist turbillaria in locating food. Obviously, as other flatworms receive nutrition directly from their host, they have no need for this. Despite these three differences, however, turbillaria are quite similar to other flatworms in all sorts of other ways. First of all, as their name suggests, they're incredibly flat, which allows them to hide under stones. They're symmetrical on both sides, and they don't have a body cavity. They also don't have any specialized respiratory, skeletal, and circulatory systems. What they do have, however, and this is what I meant when I referenced their structure before, is three layers known as the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm, as well as a head region where their brain and sense organs are located, and a spongy connective tissue that fills all the space between their organs. Finally, like most species of flatworms, they're hermaphrodites. This means that a single flatworm has a set of each gender. But don't take this to mean they reproduce alone. Their preferred method of reproduction is called cross-fertilization, which means that each flatworm fertilizes the other. I mentioned before that most flatworms need a host, but turbillaria feed from the environment. So what do they feed on? Most turbillaria can be found either in fresh or salt water, and they feed on small insects, microscopic matter, and crustaceans. They will pretty much eat anything they find. They have no preference on whether their food is living or dead. Also, and this is the most remarkable part about their eating habits, also, and this is the most remarkable part about their eating habits, if they ever find themselves in a situation where food is scarce, they might also feed on themselves. That's right, they'll start eating their own body, starting with the least essential muscles and organs and working their way up. They will shrink in size until they're able to find food again, at which point they'll begin to regenerate everything they've lost. One final thing about food, and apologies in advance if I disgust you, turbillaria don't possess an anus, which means that their mouth, which is a muscular opening on the underside of their body, has to serve as one. Before I finish this presentation, one more thing you've probably heard before but weren't sure if it was a myth or not. I mentioned already that turbillaria can reproduce on their own, but there's a second method they can use, which is known as fission. Now, as a child, you were probably told that if you cut a worm in half, it will grow into two new worms. That's not entirely true, but flatworms are not worms exactly, and they do have the ability to regenerate by splitting into two, perhaps even more smaller parts, at which point each part regrows the missing organs and becomes a brand new turbillarian. Now this is extremely important for us, and this is how I'd like to close this presentation. Because their ability to regenerate endlessly makes them virtually immortal, and it might open pathways to regeneration in human cells or slowing the human aging process, which is why scientists like myself have been studying these unique creatures, hoping to get some answers. Thank you for listening, and please come along to see me and my samples if you have any further questions. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
our channel today in this video i'll discuss with you writing task one and the question for today is the diagram above show the manufacturing shows the manufacturing process of making sugar from sugar cane so the diagram is showing the process of making sugar from sugar cane so first step is growing from uh, for 12 to 18 months sugar canes were grown then harvesting take place by uh, manually or by machines then crushing takes place at a uh, center like sugar canes are crushed and juice is extracted from that and uh, in the fourth step purifying juice that juice is and uh, filtered with the limestone filter and then evaporation take place juice becomes syrup in this process after heating then centrifuge separates uh, sugar crystals from syrup and then drying and cooling and sugar is produced from sugar canes so the process is having seven steps so let's see how we can write this now the rendered diagram means the given diagram depicts the procedure of extracting sugar from sugar canes including all necessary steps overall it is discernible from the graph means it is clear from the graph that sugar production necessitates seven different procedures each with a distinct function so it has seven steps each with a different uh, function Initially, sugar canes are planted and left for 12 to 18 months for manufacturing process. For Sorry, for maturing process. So, they mature. After that, harvesting is done either by hand or specialized machines that can operate larger quantities. So, harvesting is done either by, you know, man or manually. And other step is, other way of harvesting is using large machines. Now, after that, uh, harvesting is done either by hand or specialized machine that can operate large quantities. The next stage proceeds crushing where a special apparatus uh, crushes the gathered canes, sugar canes. Then for purifying the juice, a limestone filter is used. The purified juice is then transferred to the container and heated from the underneath. So here we can see that after, you know, uh, a purifying juice has undergone limestone filter then in the fifth step uh, they just put that juice in the container and heat and after evaporation the juice becomes a syrup so let's see uh, the next stage proceeds crushing where the special apparatus uh, crushes the gathered canes that we have done then it is passed from the limestone filter the Purified juice is then transferred to the container and heated from the underneath. At this point, the water from juice evaporates. So, after heating, evaporation takes place and the water uh, from the juice separates. And as the amount of water in the juice decreases, it transforms into syrup. So, as the juice becomes a syrup here, as the water evaporates. And then next step, it... Uh, a uh, centrifuge uh, separates the sugar crystal from the syrup in the penultimate stage. Penultimate stage means in the second last stage, a centrifuge is used, which is used for separating sugar crystal from the syrup. Now, this uh, syrup from this syrup, they just uh, separate the sugar crystal by centrifuging. Now, sugar particles are gathered in a massive container for drying and cooling in the last step. So, they, when they get the sugar crystal, they just keep that sugar crystal in a large container for the drying and cooling purposes. So, this was for today, the diagram of manufacturing sugar from sugar cane. So, if you like the video, do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and take care.